Welcome to St. Michael's and All Angels for Choral Eucharist on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Our president and preacher today will be our curate, Sarah. For those online, welcome. We are an inclusive church in the Anglican Episcopalian tradition here in Southampton, a port city on the south coast of England. We begin our service with our first hymn, number 32. Come thou ready. Any small person like to come and uh, do the honours? Oh, I see it's the usual crowd. <laughs> You'll do it. Super, thank you. How lovely. 
A little bit interesting to play with. Which one do I like? All of them apart from the centre. All of them? Okay. Except the one in the middle. Okay. We say together, God, as we wait for your promise, give light, give hope. We light these candles for all God-bearers. Saying yes to God's challenge, accepting the pain and the joy of an unknown future. God, God as, we, as wait we wait for your, your promise, promise give, give light, light, give, give hope. hope. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. first reading is taken from Micah, chapter 5, beginning of verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, 
From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when, the, when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 to 10. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings ye have not desired, but a body ye have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings ye have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I've come to do your will, O oh God. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I've come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Heavenly Father, may the words that I speak be acceptable to you. Anything that is not of you, would you just remove as chaff. But those that you want to take root in our lives, may that be your will, Lord God, we pray. Amen. This is one of those accounts, isn't it? This time when Mary went to Elizabeth, one of those that we really wonder, what on earth would that have been like? Now, the Bible is full of them, isn't it? Those events when you wish you could have been there. Which ones are like that for you, I wonder? For me, I think it's those events when something is radically changed. Like, perhaps, when God made time go backwards, as recalled in Isaiah recently in our morning prayer readings, or when he made the sun stop in Joshua, both of those from the Old Testament, or from the New Testament, how about when Jesus walked on the water, or when Paul was stopped in his tracks by God, or indeed, at the resurrection, that would be an amazing thing to witness, wouldn't it? These are events that have far more meaning than we can really imagine. And for this one, what would it be to be there? To see the interaction between Mary and her aunt, especially if we had known Mary before the archangel visited her. Would we have recognized her now? Would she have changed at all? Or would she have been the same? Would she have been inevitably changed by what she had heard and witnessed? Indeed, what had happened to her, aside from the fact that here she is now, pregnant. I do wonder what the exchange was like between Mary and the angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, at the Annunciation. How much was revealed to Mary about what would happen, about what would happen to her, and about what would happen to her son. Luke doesn't go into huge detail. He tells us later that Mary stored up all these points in her heart. And we can assume that Dr. Luke, in his research for his account of Jesus' life, was able to interview her and to get as much testimony from her as possible. This much we know but we do not know how much was revealed to her at that time so that she would have been so full of peace. I wonder if some of the things that were revealed to her were from the scriptures, from the Torah, the Jewish law, the histories, and the writings. They might have encouraged her to see that all this that was happening to her was true. Indeed, how about our Old Testament reading from Micah being one of them. This prophecy foretells of the Messiah, the Christ being born to shepherd and to rule in the strength of God the Father, a child born to bring peace on earth. Do you think this could have been revealed to her then? 
or perhaps over the time from when that happened until now, when she goes on this visit, she's spending lots of time reflecting on all that has happened and all that will happen. And the words of Micah perhaps come to her as words of comfort and peace. Perhaps these words, along with those of Isaiah, when the Messiah is described as a child born to be our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting Father, and our Prince of Peace. Perhaps these words would embolden her to go to Elizabeth's, to see what's happened there too. So God could well have worked through Scripture to encourage her, as well as the Holy Spirit coming over her. And so she had this gift of peace. She's so full of peace, full of grace, full of the Holy Spirit, so that when she visits her aunt, Elizabeth, there's something in her, there's something about her, around her, through her, that is so different. If Mary still had questions, these would surely have been put aside entirely when Elizabeth sees her for the first time. You look at verse 41 of our Gospel reading. Just when Elizabeth heard Mary cry out something like, Hi, Auntie! You can imagine, can't you? Before any other interaction, she knew the truth of who Mary was carrying. She knew because there was such a huge response to the voice of Mary from her own womb. What on earth is going on? Something here on earth, in her that only has heavenly sense and is of divine creation. A baby's kick, that response, is such an exciting experience for the first-time mother. But this isn't just any old kick. It's communi communicating on a deep spiritual level to both her and Mary about who Mary's baby is. And in the words of Elizabeth in verse 42, she describes this baby and Mary, blessed is the fruit of your womb. The image of fruit looks back to the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. But this time, Jesus' fruit is for all of us, for all to take into our lives to supply us with life. So the fruit of her womb is to be a blessing for us all. But Elizabeth doesn't leave it there. She adds that blessed is Mary too for her, for her faithfulness in believing what had been shown her. It's more than confirmation for Mary. Both assertions by Elizabeth are further prophecies about the child Mary is bearing. Prophecy like those from the Torah that inform and impact upon Mary. The whole experience is overwhelming for both of them. Neither was expecting this. Nothing like this had ever happened before. There's no record to go by about what they do now. But they speak words from the heart, inspired by the Spirit of God. And that's what happens. Now, there is one final prophecy we have here in verse 47, and you can see the words of that in the Magnificat, which we sang this morning rather than our appointed psalm, because that's the response that Mary has to all of this. And she notes, for the first time in this current time, that Jesus is the one to be our saviour. God has created within her the life giver and saviour of the world. Up until now, the use of the title saviour was found in those prophecies of Micah and Isaiah. But with all that has happened to her, all that she has experienced, seen, felt, heard, said, she can now own what she may well have known right from the very beginning when Gabriel came to her. These are words that come from the heart, words of truth 
the reality. This truth has dawned upon her in a new way, and so now she sings her praise and worship to God. What can we learn from this for ourselves today? Is there something that we can take from this for ourselves? Mary and Elizabeth's testimonies are so far removed from ours, it might seem very unlikely that there is anything to be remarked upon for us, apart from being in utter admiration and respect for them both. But I'd like to say there's a bit more to it than just that. There's something in here about how we allow God to speak to us, about how we expect or perhaps even we don't really expect God to intervene in our lives through reading scripture. I use the word allow because it's true to say that God very rarely turns up and demands to be listened to. Saul, to become Paul, is one unique occasion when God did demand attention and change, and for Mary too. But for most of, this, most of us, this type of event is going to be quite unlikely. So we need to be open to what God might want to say to us. We need to be prepared to make space for him in our lives, to reflect on scripture daily if possible, so that if there is a piece of scripture that is gift-wrapped especially for us, then we can hear it and take it into our lives allowing it to do the task for which it was designed. It's giving God the time to speak. That's the thing. But if we're so busy that we don't have the peace in our minds and hearts to hear him, it's far less likely that we will hear him because the busyness just crowds in on everything else. And then there will be a little chance that we could be like Elizabeth, or Mary, and know that God has spoken and done something that could well be really significant for us or for others. So there is much to take from this amazing passage, and this I would like to leave you with, that in order to have anything like the peace that Mary appears to have in her heart and mind, we need to make ourselves available to God so that the Holy Spirit can minister to us and lead us. Amen. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and Bride, come, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Today we remember the Virgin Mary saying yes to God, that she would bear his son, however difficult it would be for her. We remember all those who have listened and said yes to God. And we all can hear him if we just listen. But we remember today our clergy led by Sheena, 
Thank you for our ministry team, our choir, and all those who make this church a loving and welcoming place. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the places where we live, that we have beds to sleep in and food to eat. We pray for all those who are homeless and hungry. We ask your blessing on those in government and pray that they take wise and thoughtful decisions and show by example how we should all be behaving for the common good. We think of the increasing disaster in Afghanistan, the families who are cold and the lack of food, for places of war and unrest and places where man's inhumanity to man is shown. We think at this time of Myanmar, where the churches are closed because of COVID among the clergy. We pray for those congregations that they may know Christmas peace as they pray at home. We remember the people of Southampton who sleep on the streets and hope that they will have a bed and food at Christmas time at least. And we pray for those who have nobody to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who seek to support family life, all who care for unwanted or homeless children, all children taken into care. Today, we especially remember the incidences of child abuse and neglect and mourn those who have wretched lives. We remember the street children of the world and all who are used as cheap labor. We thank you for the work of social workers, the Children's Society and the NSPCC. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those for whom Christmas is a difficult time, those who are alone and all who long to be needed, for those who mourn. As COVID continues, we think of those who are suffering from it and those who care for them. We pray for the medical and ancillary staff who work so hard. We pray for those who are unwell or getting better and have asked for our prayers. Kelly, Kevin, Christine, Tom, Lucy, Philip, another Christine, Luke, Rogelio, John, Vicky, Yvonne, Dennis, and Margaret. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you came to earth that in your power and love we might ascend into heaven. Bless our friends and loved ones who are departed this life. For those who have died recently, all those known personally to us and whose anniversary of falls are falls around this time. We know that they are safe in the hands of our loving God. We must remember that love goes on forever. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please do stand if you are so able. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace observing current COVID regulations here in church and no doubt as you will wherever you are.
And so now we uh, sing number uh, 58, A Great and Mighty Wonder, hymn number 58. <laughs> As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her a house. She's mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, 
we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever, praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outboard may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, and gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Every time we eat this bread 
and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And shall we say together, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. So we come to our time of notices, and uh, the observant will have noticed that Christmas is definitely upon us. Uh, the Christmas trees have already been put up and, and are looking wonderful. I think you'll agree with me. I think flowers are going to appear during this week, uh, which will be amazing. But our first Christmas carol service, or our Christmas carol service, uh, is going to be on this evening. I know the choir have been preparing uh, very much for that, so please do come along and support them and, and just get into the, the, the season. That's what happens when we can actually sing carols, and this year we can sing carols. So let's enjoy that, because we don't know what's going to happen next, do we? Okay, so do do that. I think the angels have all flown away. Thank you very much to all those who knitted angels. I'm not, not sure there's many left at all. Uh, but do pray that actually the message that they were taking will be delivered to those people who really need to hear that message. I do want to draw attention to one um, big notice here um, on the inside of the back cover. Uh, Living in love and faith, um, there's a few dates where you can join in um, on a, a a course that has been developed by the Church of England to help us all to investigate, to learn, to share together what the Christian teaching is about identity, sexuality, relationships, and marriage. It's something that actually uh, we are being encouraged to do across, across the whole of the Church of England. Uh, we have three separate opportunities across the week. Um, if you notice that, there, there's one that's going to be on Wednesday evening, Monday evening, and then Tuesday evening at various uh, points. They're starting off in January. But please do really consider whether you could actually uh, join one of those. The Zoom is easier if you don't want to come out at night time. All Saints Church is uh, our lovely little parish church, uh, church down, down the road a little bit. Um, so please do consider whether you could actually join in that. That would be a really good thing for you to do. And now I have been asked to read out this announcement. After three and a half years with us here in North Stoneham Bassett, it is with mixed feelings that we tell you that the Reverend John O'Harvey has been offered and accepted the post of vicar at St. Thomas's Fair Oak. Mixed feelings because we will miss John O, Helen, Ethan, Anais, and Lucas, but also a realization that this is an exciting opportunity for them as they continue to follow God's call. The appointment is subject to a range of statutory checks before it can be made formal, but we anticipate a licensing service in the spring. So that's exciting news for the Harvey family, but it will leave a hole for us here in our parish, especially for the Church of St. Nicholas, uh, where obviously John has done most of his ministry. Uh, so please do continue to pray for the ministry team, but please do bear the Harvey family in your prayers, especially at this time. That would be great. So let us stand and sing our final hymn, um, which is number 394, and it's uh, the hymn setting of Mary's hymn, Tell Out My Soul. <laughs>
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Thank you.